order that we want to answer in? Or? Um, what I did on Tuesday was just to ask, like, I'll just call on people, um, if that works. Or that we want to answer in? Or? Um, what I did on Tuesday was just to ask, like, I'll <laughs> sorry. Okay. Welcome everyone. Um, we are just getting started here. Um, probably give a minute and a half or so for um, everyone to join in and then we'll get started with the CS Academy Q&A. Thanks for coming. everyone welcome to the cs academy q a uh, we're going to get started in just a minute or so um, in the meantime if you want to say hello in the chat just introduce your school uh, that'd be great and we will get started soon All right, um, welcome. Uh, as we're doing all week this week, this is uh, CMU CS Academy live Q&A. Uh, my name is Evan. I am the principal software developer at CMU CS Academy. Um, and I'm joined today by um, two students, two undergraduates from Carnegie Mellon who work on the project, Q and Amar. And um, we, let's see, just before, um, we get going here, I just remind you, as you're probably aware, uh, we have four more of these this week. You're welcome to bring another class or the same class back again uh, today, 5.30 Eastern time or 9.30, 1.30 or 5.30 Eastern time tomorrow. Um, our expectations are that uh, just classroom teachers will post questions on behalf of their students in the YouTube chat. And uh, I'll pick up questions from there and ask them of our students. And um, in the meantime, I'll get started with some prepared questions we have. Um, also, as you come in, um, please feel free to introduce yourself, announce your school and where you're from, um, just, uh, just so we can all see who's out there. And I think, I think that should be it. Um, yeah, so here we go. Um, so as I said, my name is Evan, um, I'm the software developer at CMU CS Academy, uh, which means I try to keep the site basically up and running and um, work with our software development team to add new features as well. Um, I grew up in Pittsburgh and currently live in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, which is about halfway between Philly, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. Um, and I've worked on the project for two and a half years. Um, so, uh, Q, would you be willing to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Q, and currently I am a junior here at Carnegie Mellon studying statistics, and I have a minor in creative writing. Um, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, and as of now, I've been working for um, CS Academy for about a year and a half. Uh, I do a lot of different things on the project. I work with our growth and metrics team. Um, I work with like teacher support and outreach as well, as well as our universal uh, 
diversity and inclusion design team as well. So, yeah. Thanks, Q. Um, Amar, can you introduce yourself? Of course, yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Amar. I'm currently a senior at Carnegie Mellon. I'm studying architecture and I'm minoring in human computer interaction. I'm originally from Princeton, New Jersey, which is where I am right now. Um, I joined CS Academy back in the summer, actually. So I'm a pretty recent addition to the CS Academy team. I am a member of the content creation team, which means I basically am responsible for coding many of the exercises that you solve throughout our curriculum. And I'm also a member of the UX team, which means I help look at designs uh, for how the site should function and how you as students and teachers interact with the site. So yeah. Great, thanks. Um, let's see, to get started here, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, how you came, like how you joined the CS Academy project and what you find most exciting about working on it. Um, Amar, could you keep going? Sure. Um, I joined CS Academy because, um, so the founder, David Cosby, teaches this really popular uh, programming class at CMU. It's like kind of like the intro programming class that people, if you've never had any experience coding before, they would take that class. And um, I took that while I was here at CMU and I really loved it. I really just loved and enjoyed coding. And I found that it was something that I really want to integrate in my career moving forward. And I mean, I, I'm not sure if I necessarily want to be a software engineer, but I definitely want to involve programming in whatever it is that I choose to do. And one day I saw a post from Professor Cosme saying that he has this project at CS Academy and he wanted to recruit some of his former students to help out with the project's mission. And it sounded like a fantastic project and something that would be really cool to work on. So I applied and yeah, I was accepted in and I have really enjoyed working with the project so far for a number of reasons. I think it's just great because I've gotten to work with so many different people of like different majors and backgrounds at CMU. I've been able to like meet students, like my some my fellow CMU students who I probably wouldn't have had contact with if it weren't for CS Academy. And yeah, I, I like how being a member of this project requires me to do various tasks. Like it's not like I'm just on one team doing the same role over and over again. I'm I've been asked to like help out with different things throughout the project. And I really like that flexibility. So yeah. Cool, thanks, Mark. Um, how about you, Q? How did you find the project and what do you find satisfying about it? Yeah, um, so I found the project through uh, one of Professor Cosby's courses as well. So I was actually in 15110. So it's like uh, kind of like a slower introductory Python course. Um, and I was interested before in just doing some work um, in Africa. Um, and so I knew that Professor Cosby had done some stuff like that. So I just went to him and I just, I wasn't even, I didn't even know about CS Academy at the time. I just met with him because I knew we had some similar interests in like education uh, on the African continent. Um, and I just wanted to talk to him about it. Uh, so during that meeting, he told me about uh, CS Academy and he actually was able to send me and some of our teammates to Senegal to lead a professional development training for teachers there. Um, so I've been on the team ever since and I feel like it has just been really, really satisfying to work with teachers all across the country and all across the globe um, and just help them bring computer science education to their classrooms. Um, I just know how much learning how to program has impacted me. And it's just really nice to know that I can help have that same impact on other people. Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, speaking of learning how to program, since we are creating a curriculum for teaching people how to program, I wonder, uh, it'd be interesting to hear your perspective. Um, neither one of you is a computer science major, but I um, so particularly interesting to hear, like, why do you think it's important to learn to program and what, what value do you see that providing in your life or other people's lives? Um, Q, could you go first? Yeah, sure. Um, I think it just, 
these days, like, you know, as technology keeps improving and advancing, uh, computer science plays a major role in a lot of different fields. Um, I'm a statistics major and we do a lot of data vi visualization and things like that. But I even know people like, um, I have a lot of friends who are actually art majors and even they use computer science um, to do digital renditions of their art, um, game design and a lot of things like that. So I just feel like it's important to, even if you don't know how to program very well, I still think it's important to have like a basic foundation or understanding of computer science and programming and what it is just because uh, it's very relevant in every field. Um, it can just help you have better context and understanding uh, no matter what you decide to go in, no matter what your interests are. Cool, what do you think, Amar? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with you. Um, I really think that programming and just computer science in general is gonna start to become more and more involved in every industry, I think in the future. That's just the kind of trend I see us heading in. And I, I think fundamentally computer science and programming is all about problem solving. So even if it's not something that you enjoy doing, it's still really helpful to have that kind of foundation in CS and learn the basics of coding because those problem solving skills and skills you learn related to like debugging and being able to like trace your steps, um, figure out what part of the process like you need or just like identifying like problems, like all of that is really helpful for no matter what kind of career path you follow because I, I think problem solving goes a long way. And that's why I think having a little bit of like basic understanding of programming is really helpful too. I think Evan, are you, I think Evan's screen is a little frozen. Uh, sorry about that. It looks like um, Evan might have disconnected. Yeah, hopefully he'll be back soon. Um, yeah, I can pull up the questions. Yeah, sure. And I guess we can just answer some. Yeah. Um, hmm. I know, I guess we can talk oh, about, back. oh, Evan's back. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, Evan, you're, you're muted. Um, I'm sorry about that. Somehow I lost my internet connection there for a second. Hopefully we're all good now. Um, okay. Sorry, I missed that. Okay, um, picking up for those, uh, who have joined later. Um, again, you're welcome to post questions in the YouTube live chat. Um, I am a full-time programmer on the project and Amar and Q are undergraduates here at Carnegie Mellon who are happy to provide their, uh, their wisdom, their experience, any thoughts they have about um, curriculum uh, or high school, applying to college, life at college, et cetera. Um, so feel free to chime in with any questions that you have. And I will do my best to stay connected here. Um, now, sorry, Amar, did you finish what you were saying? Yeah, yeah, I, oh, I'm pretty much finished talking about that. Okay, okay, sorry. All right, um, continuing on, um, I think it might be here, uh, interesting for people to hear about um, why you chose to come to Carnegie Mellon. Um, it's a we have a lot of great things going on at Carnegie Mellon, but I think nationally, it's not like super well-known. Um, just depends on what field you're in, I guess. Um, yeah, anyway, so Amar, I guess, what are some things about Carnegie Mellon that attracted you here? Uh, or yeah, what made you decide? Yeah, so um, I think when I was applying to college, CMU slowly became my first choice school for a number of reasons. I I made a visit there while I was a senior and I fell in love with the campus atmosphere, the kinds of activities that were going on. And it really seemed like a place where I could get a lot of um, both academic like benefits from. Like um, One of the things I learned about CMU is that it really emphasizes interdisciplinary culture and trying to combine a lot of what you learn in both your primary major with 
different interests and different departments. Um, CMU really encourages you to pursue things like additional minors or even just like see how you can combine things that you learn from your other classes with your, your main academic interests, I'd say. And so for me personally, I had, I'd always want to go to architecture school, but I really was interested in kind of exploring the bridge between architecture and technology, seeing how architecture and computer science could kind of be interrelated. And CMU really offered a place for me to be able to explore that connection. So yeah, that was one reason. And then I also just think that the the small community of CMU, I think we only have about uh, 6,000 or so undergrad students. And I, I really just like that small close knit community because the chances of you like being on campus and just seeing like one of your friends walking by is like so, so high. Like you don't, you don't feel like you're ever too lost in such a big crowd of people. And that was something, that was one of the reasons why I chose not to attend a really big state school. Um, I prefer that kind of smaller community. Thanks. How about you, Q? Yeah. Um, so I didn't know about Carnegie Mellon. Like I never heard of it or anything until the summer before my senior year of high school. Um, so I had this like internship or job where I was building websites for nonprofits in my hometown. And we had like a mentor who basically helped us with everything that we were going through. And he was a computer science major at Carnegie Mellon. And he just talked about how much he loved Carnegie Mellon and everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so that kind of piqued my interest. I was like, hmm, I mean, I don't know if I want to study computer science, but it seems like a really cool school. Like this guy really likes it. So um, I started talking to my dad about it because he uh, went to Pitt, which is right down the street from Carnegie Mellon. So I figured he might know something about it. Um, and it turns out he had some friends that went to Carnegie Mellon and one of my cousins had just graduated from Carnegie Mellon. So I got to talk to um, a lot of them and slowly I started to fall more in love with it. Um, similar to what Mar was saying, like I really love the interdisciplinary aspect of Carnegie Mellon. Like I feel like there's no other place where I could study statistics and creative writing at the same time. So I really, really like that um, I'm able to do that. Um, I don't know, like when I came for an overnight visit after I got accepted, uh, the people here were just so kind. Like I got to talk to a lot of the current students and they were able to answer all my questions. They just seemed very passionate about what they were doing and very happy. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what made me want to come. Cool. And how did you pick your major, Q? How did you end up with statistics? Well, in creative writing too, actually. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so I have always loved writing. Like ever since I was young, I used to always like write short stories and little poems and stuff. And I, I don't know, I just wrote a lot. I used to like enter competitions and stuff, but I didn't really know if that's what I wanted to do in college. Like it was like a hobby, but I didn't know if I like wanted to dedicate myself to studying it. Um, so when I was applying for schools, I had no clue <laughs> what I wanted to study. Um, at all. And then I took this statistics class. And honestly, I just took it because my friends were taking it. And I went to hang out with my friends in the senior year. Um, but then I actually fell in love with it. Like the teacher was amazing. He kind of showed us how it could be applied to so many different fields. And I was like, this seems really cool. Like it could be applied to a lot of the fields that I'm potentially interested in. Um, so when I was applying, I applied to a lot of different programs. I applied to computer science programs, econ programs, some statistics, some even English. I just applied it to all different types of stuff. And then when I got into Carnegie Mellon, I actually came in undecided because <laughs> I was having another crisis and I just didn't know, I didn't want to commit to anything. And then at CMU, I realized like statistics was right for me. It was just so perfect here, the way that they teach statistics. Um, you immediately can learn how it's applied in different fields. It's not just so bogged down with like math and theory. It's also just like, here's how you can have a positive social impact. Um, here's how you can apply it to different things. So that's kind of how I chose my um, major, but I kind of, oh, I wanted to really stick with writing and make sure I kept doing it even through college. So I decided to declare the minor as well, just to add some structure for my writing in there. Me. How about you, Omar? 
Yeah, for me, um, so with my major of architecture, it was something I decided I wanted to study in high school because I really loved both. Um, I guess like I always had an interest in STEM and I was really passionate about like math in high school. That was one of my favorite subjects. But then um, all my life, I've also loved to to draw and also um, I feel like I had kind of like an artistic sense as well. So architecture became a way for me to join both those interests in math and engineering and STEM related stuff with a kind of like artistic side. So that was my main reason for choosing that major and applying to those programs when I was applying to college. And then when I came into CMU, I was able to take a programming class and I realized I wanted to focus more on doing more programming stuff related to architecture. And then that was actually how I learned more about the HCI program, which is related to UX design as a field. And I found that that was a really, really nice way to kind of combine both like design thinking as well as programming in a sense. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'd say like, that's how my, my major and my career interests have built up over time. Cool. I wonder if you guys have a, um, a favorite CS Academy exercise or, or any that you've enjoyed working on or struggled with yourself. Amar, are there any of, are there any exercises that you've made that are in CS1? Yeah, there's a couple. Um, okay. Uh, I've made two in the for loop section and then one I've made is this Harry Potter one, which I think is all the way in unit eight. Um, yeah, I'd oh, say that. I don't that think one, I've seen that one. Yeah, that, that one is pretty interesting. <laughs> It's like you click the mouse and there's supposed to be like a spell that explodes. But yeah, I, I don't know if I could think of a favorite exercise I have off the top of my head. Um, there's a couple, there's a couple of good ones. That, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Puffy the Penguin. So I love the exercise where you have to make his stomach expand. Uh -huh. Probably one of my favorites. Cool. Well, for those of you who are working through the course, yeah, it might take another couple of months before you see Harry Potter in Unit 8, but it's coming. Cool. Um, Q, any any exercise thoughts? Hmm. Um, I mean, they're all, like, really fun. Um, I like a lot, but I don't know. Personally, I'm, like, a big fan of, like, the porcupine slash hedgehog exercises because <laughs> I think they're so cute. I mean, really, all the ones with animals, I think, are really cute. So, <laughs> yeah, but I think any of them with the porcupine slash hedgehog takes the cake for me. Cool, fair enough. Um, oh, all right, we have an audience question. All right, they ask, um, what would be good classes to take in high school that would prepare you well for CS after high school? Um, Amar, did you take any CS classes in high school or other classes that you felt like were good preparation later? I did, yeah. Um, uh, definitely, I think taking, I don't know how many high schools have like an intro to programming class. That was what my school district offered, just like an intros beginner. And in that, I learned Java. And then my school also offered AP Computer Science A. Um, so I would definitely recommend taking that. Um, that was like one of the things that also like made me, I, I'd say that was like my first introduction to programming in CS and like I really liked it and that was also like one of the reasons that or like how I first found out about CMU too as a university because of my my teacher in that class and yeah that further encouraged me to apply and look at like universities universities in general that have like a strong CS program um yeah I, I think those two definitely are some, some classes you should consider taking I think now they also offer another AP computer science course. It's like APCS principles or something or APCS B. Yeah, CS something. principles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those ones. Um I guess like in addition to those, maybe I don't know how many schools offer like a conceptual maths class. Maybe that's not like so much of a high school course, but taking some math 
does help with CS for sure. That makes sense. Um, yeah, it's interesting. The sort of math that I think of, like discrete math is what it often gets called in college, but it's rare to find something like that, like proof-based math in high school. Um, what about you, Q? Any other, any other thoughts about good things to take in high school? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think of Mars, right? But I also would say, like, if you can't take those classes, don't stress. So actually, my school offered a lot of CS, and I didn't take any of it. <laughs> um, for me, CS was just like a hobby. It was just like something fun to like learn on the side. Um, I came in, like, it definitely makes it easier if you have some experience. But if you don't have the opportunity to take a CS class, that's also okay. Don't let that discourage you from going getting into cs when you get to college um there are introductory classes for a reason i took those introductory classes um and i'm here i'm i think i'm a pretty well successful programmer um i would say trying to take math classes is really important because a like when you get like to the basic cs it's just like a bunch of math and it also helps you with um like you're just like your logic thinking which i think is really helpful for cs like you kind of like when you're solving problems and things you need to like logically think okay why is this going wrong and how can i fix it and math really does that um so i think like i would just say like try to take a lot of math classes if you can and the cs classes if you can but if you can't that's also okay yeah i think that's a really good message um knowing just how different every school is um yeah everyone's just got different options available to them so cool um, what about other things that you did in high school that seemed, I guess maybe especially those that seemed valuable in terms of college prep, but um, other things too, I guess I'd just be curious to hear about um, high school activities that were meaningful to you. Um, Q, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, so in high school, I like did a lot of stuff. I was all over the place. Um, <laughs> so I was in the orchestra. Um, I played the viola for like 10 years and that was really fun. I feel like that played an impact in my life, just like having a break from things, which is really nice. Um, but I always like to say like the thing that affected me most in college as far as what I did in high school was sports. So I played three sports. Um, I played flag football, I played lacrosse and I threw shot put for the track and field team at my school. And I feel like that helped me a lot. Um, because I feel like physical activity is very important to me now. It helps me have a good mental state. It helps me stay in physical shape as well. Um, and I wouldn't have like really gotten to exercise if I didn't like play sports so much through high school. So I feel like that kind of helped me have a balance in my life, which I think is really important when you get to college. Sometimes you can get so bogged down in school that you forget to like do those things to take care of yourself. Um, but because like I kind of, had that like foundation set from high school i was able i'm able to like more naturally like do those different things i need to do so yeah thanks how about you mark yeah i i couldn't agree more with you because um i also was an athlete in high school i ran track and field for four years and um i think doing a sport is really really important and kind of underrated in high school because one like being an athlete teaches you discipline and also how to manage your time well and I'd say those are like some of the things that people struggle the most with upon entering college and really having that like sense of like how to like effectively like manage your time like when juggling like many different things like such as like your assignments and extracurriculars while a college student is hard for most people. And if you already have that kind of like experience with being an athlete in high school, then it goes a long way when you transition from high school to college. Um, aside from that, for me, like, uh, I guess like I, I was involved with like volunteering as well. So like I helped tutor um, people at my local library as part of like this one like society at my high school and then I also like was part of like the student government club as well and yeah I think um, I don't know looking back at it I, I feel like I didn't do things that or 
I, I felt like when I was a high school student, I kind of focused on like quantity more than quality when it came to extracurriculars. And like looking back, like I would have definitely, I wish I had spent more time focusing on like a few extracurriculars that like I really, really cared about as opposed to just trying to do too much, which is like what I kind of did. Okay, that's interesting. Um, Q, do you have any thoughts about like advice that you would have given your high school self along those lines or others? Yeah, yeah. Um, so in high school, I was like very, I was a very anxious, wired person. Um, I was always like, I don't know, I had a tendency to like spiral <laughs> sometimes. So like if I like did badly on a test, I was like, oh my God, like I did badly on this test, which means I'm gonna fail the whole class and then I'm never gonna get into college and my whole life's gonna be over. When in reality, like I failed one exam, like it's not really that big of a deal. Like there's, I feel like in high school you have like six exams and like several homeworks and like all that. Like it doesn't, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter. But at the time I was very, like I just thought every little thing, I just blew it out of proportion. So I wish I could just tell myself like, you know, you're gonna be good, it's gonna be fine. It's all gonna work out. Um, because I feel like I had to adopt that message in college <laughs> um, because sometimes in college you fail a lot. And like people said that and I was like, that's not gonna be me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do great. And that um, was not the case. I did fail many times, but I think like because I ended up adopting this message of like, you know, like when you fail, that's just a learning opportunity so that when you go in the future, you can do things better. Um, once I kind of like adopted that mindset, like it has just helped me so much with my mental health. It's actually also helped me with my grades because I had a tendency to like give up sometimes. Cause I'd be like, well, I messed up. Like everything is over. But now I'm like, you know what? I messed up and now I'm going to bounce back even stronger. Um, and I wish that if I had told myself, I wish I told myself that in high school and kind of adopted that mentality earlier. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit of advice I would give. Nice, thanks. All right, we've got another uh, teacher question here, which see we challenging uh, CMU's interdisciplinary-ness. Um, the teacher asks, uh, they have a student interested in studying CS and history. Um, is there any connection that you guys have seen between CS and history or yeah, that happens at CMU? Um, Amar, if you, don't, if you don't have anything, is it okay if I answer? Oh, sure. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't, I didn't okay, say sorry, sorry. Um, I would say yes, actually, like there's different ways. And I'd say I've seen that tie together a lot in my statistics classes, actually. I mean, in statistics, we use a lot of CS, like I said earlier, to do uh, data analytics and data vis visualization, sorry, <laughs> data visualization. And um, with a lot of statistics, we look at like change over time and different history and stuff like that. Um, so I definitely do feel like there are different ways you can tie it together and like use like data from the past and like use different like history to contextualize those things. Um, yeah, but also I would say like, if you just like, you don't necessarily have to connect them. I actually, fun fact, I take a history class. I try to take a history class every semester. I've done it maybe like four semesters so far. And this is my, I'm in my fifth semester, I guess. So I've taken only like one time, I haven't taken a history class in a semester. Um, and it has been very eye opening. They don't always like connect directly to like my major studies or even my minor studies, but um, you will definitely have the space in your schedule to like explore those things at CMU. So I would definitely say like, if you're interested in CS and history, like go for it. Like, I don't know, you if you if you like both of them, you can definitely find a way to connect them. Cool. Um, any other thoughts about that, Amar? Yeah, just to add on to that, I, I personally haven't seen that connection, at least at CMU, but I can just think of so many ways that the two can be tied together because I feel like similar to what you said about da like data analysis and statistics, um, that's like really common in history. One of the main reasons why we study history is to learn lessons from the past and look at data trends and all of that. And computer science and programming is just a fantastic tool to 
really efficiently do data analysis and derive trends from things that we've seen in the past. And yeah, I mean, I think like I, I, I was reading somewhere that biologists actually like use like when they have like fossils or something or like really like old skeletons and they like want to like learn about like these or not, I mean, biologists and like archeologists, sorry, like all of those like professionals, um, oftentimes like they can like use computer science then and or people with a programming background to build actual like simulations of like what like that fossil, that animal like would look like now using like, like rendering softwares and all of that. So that's like another way I think that CS could really be used with um, visualizing things from the past as well. So that's just like another random connection that popped up in my head. But, but yeah, like you said, if you really like both of them, you can definitely find a way to connect what you're learning in both subjects or use like CS as a tool to really like emphasize what you learn in history, I guess. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Um, hi, Richard, welcome. Sorry, you having internet issues. Um, you weren't the only one, but hopefully everything will be good now. Yeah. Um, I can give a brief introduction. That'd be awesome, yeah. So hi everyone, uh, my name is Richard. I am a junior working on CS Academy. I am majoring in computer science with a minor in game design. I'm from Miami, Florida, and I work on the Spanish team. So we primarily translate the content from the curriculum over to the Spanish language, I guess, yeah. And um, I had internet issues because uh, people are messing around with the roof of like out there and then like someone touched some of the cables and yeah, <laughs> unfortunate. Cool, well, welcome. Um, let's see, uh, going back to CMU things, um, what are some activities that you guys do at CMU, I guess, outside of um, CS Academy? Um, well, Richard, do you want to keep going? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I, outside of like a school school, I am part of a student organization called ColorStack, which is a student org meant for like a, mm -hmm. trying to get more uh, underrepresented minorities in like the technical mm -hmm. field sort of connected with one another. And then outside of CMU entirely, uh, activities I like to enjoy are, I like to read, I like to play video games a lot, maybe a little bit too much. Um, I like listening to music lots and uh, there's something else, but I forget. Oh, and I like watching anime. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Um, Amara, how about you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I guess like for the activities that like I'm involved with at CMU specifically, in addition to like balancing like my academics, um, I'm part of the fraternity on campus and that takes up like a lot of my time because it's a lot of just like participation in like events and stuff. And then at CMU, we have like a lot of like weird traditions, I guess that are very like CMU specific. So we have this one thing called booth, which is where <laughs> every spring um like various organizations will get together and build a one story or two story house over a week and yeah it's it's the most random thing ever and when i first saw it as a cmu student i was just like why why do people spend time doing this but yeah that's something that my fraternity does every year so um and like i'm very involved with that so yeah that's like one of my favorite activities being a student. Um, Does someone live in the house? I'm not. No, no. It's just food. for like people to walk in and explore during carnival. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, in addition to that, I'm also involved with um, this one CMU program called Impact, which is where um, CMU sends a couple of their students from Pittsburgh to their sister campus in Doha, Qatar, actually. So yeah, that's a, another cool community that I'm a part of at CMU. Um, I guess like my hobbies and interests, uh, I really love to like go hiking and just like kayaking as well. And I found like ways, there's like a lot of nice places to do that in the city of Pittsburgh. And yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Cool. Yeah, Pittsburgh is amazing in terms of like the number of parks and the huge rivers that are like right in the city, like easily accessible from campus. I miss that now that I don't live in Pittsburgh anymore. Um, Q, how about you? 
Yeah. Um, so on campus, I do a few things. So I'm involved with the Schwartz Center for Entrepreneurship in our School of Business. So um, I have a startup, so I do work with them. Um, just like learning more about how to be a good entrepreneur um, and things like that, uh, doing networking and cool stuff. Um, I'm also involved in Greek life, so I'm in a sorority on campus and we do some of those cool things that Mar was talking about, like build a booth and stuff. Um, I'm involved in Spirit, which is our Black Student Union. Um, and then off campus, uh, I like to eat, both cook and eat out. So I'm usually trying to like learn how to make new foods or uh, try new foods. Yeah, Pittsburgh has really good food. So I try to go out and, and do that stuff too. So, yeah. What's something you'd like to cook? Um, I've been really into wings recently. I've been like, perfecting my wing recipe like I make wings twice a week and tweak oh, like wow <laughs> and tweak them because I want like I've been working on it really hard like trying to perfect them and I'm almost there like I'm right. so close <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> cool uh going back to academics what's one of your favorite courses that you've taken at CMU I guess you took a statistics course Q that that helped convince you. Um, is that what you'd say your favorite course is or another one? Um, yeah, I'd probably say that that's my favorite course just because it like truly, I don't know, it just like helped me discover my passion in statistics. Like it took me from interested to passionate. So the class was basically like about uh, surveying and like how to make a good survey. Um, but also like in the context of like society. So now like a lot of our surveys and stuff have a tendency to be very biased. Um, and when you have biased information, you make decisions that don't accurately um, reflect what the uh, what your people want, what your sample like wants and in the best way. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we focused on in the class was how to make surveys that reduce bias, um, how to like control for bias, um, and things like that. And basically just how to like have like good unbiased data, which I think is like really important um, because yeah, like when you have an accurate uh, reflection of what your sample wants, uh, you make decisions that are good for them. So yeah, uh, I don't know. It just like really helped me understand like how applicable statistics can be and how you can use it for good. I always knew like whatever I did, I needed to have a positive social impact. And that kind of showed me like, okay, like with statistics, I can have that positive social impact. So I think that was probably my favorite class. Yeah. Nice, it sounds like a good one. Um, Amar, what about you? What's, what's one of your favorite classes you've taken? Ooh, so I, th I think the coolest class I've taken um, has to be um, in my sophomore year. I took this one robotics and architecture class. And what we have to do is actually, um, or like what we got to do in the class is actually control and program one of the industrial robots that's in the School of Architecture's lab. And yeah, that was just really cool. It was the first time I've ever like moved a robot, like this giant robot arm and yeah i mean it, it was a lot like playing a video game and it was just a cool experience you know to see how like robotics is being used to advance like many industries specifically in that class i learned about how like robotics is being used to in relation to construction and just like building like products and stuff like that but, but yeah i mean that was probably like the most unique class i think i've taken that sounds really fun. What sorts of things could the giant robot arm do? Um, so in the lab that it's in, they mostly use it for a lot of like experimental construction projects. Um, they use it for, or like you can attach many different things to the arms, like the end of the arm, I guess. So one of the things they've attached is a hot wire cutter and they've used it to cut many different like forms of like blocks and like very complex forms related to that. They've attached a hot glue gun to it and have made like this really like intricate structure entirely made of like 
uh, solidified glue, so stuff like that. Yeah, very, very abstract project so far. Okay, neat, thanks. Richard, what would you say one of your favorite courses is? Um, so I'm gonna give a, a honorable mention to our introductory programming class, uh, 15112, because uh, that was back when programming was still really cute and like how like you know this like veil of mystery of like oh the computer does a bunch of stuff but you know you're touching you're talking to the computer and you know it's like it's doing like you're playing tetris oh look at this it's really cool um and then like all my further advanced uh computing classes have all been it's all just math and it's all really dumb math um but i think my favorite class i've taken at cmu it was one I wasn't expecting to like as much as I did was uh, learning about learning. It's a class that our ID8 department has on campus. And our ID8 department is like this uh, like interdisciplinary sort of like branch of like uh, psychology and like computing and like educational uh, media design and technology. And um, it was really, really cool because I was expecting going into the class to just, you know, like when you see, when you hear like learning about learning, I expect to like learn like some weird meta knowledge about learning. And we did, but it was also for like the purpose of like teaching. It was like an education class, but it was so meta because like every time the, like the professor would talk to us about a strategy that she used in her teaching, like we had to like analyze it, but like she would also use the same strategies while teaching the strategy itself. It got really meta really quickly about like two or three weeks in where we were just learning a bunch of strategies and like employing them and like we knew what they were doing and it's like, is this cheating? Are we like, are we not supposed to like understand why it is that they're making us do these, these things? It was, it was super cool. It was like really trippy. And then at the end we had to give like a presentation using like all the concepts that we learned. And I actually felt like it was really, really helpful in terms of like, just like knowing like the psychology of like a human brain in terms of like how it learns and like reacts to things, but also like, you know, how to adapt to like uh, different sort of like audiences or like, you know, their, uh, what their general knowledge is when they come into a class, etc. That was really interesting. Cool. This may be hard, but I wonder if you could give some idea of like what a typical day looks like for you at CMU. Like, um, yeah, just some some things that you might do on your on your average Thursday. I suppose you could even use today as an example. But um, yeah, what's a what does a day look like? Now this year is a little bit different than other years because people are all over the place and it's virtual. But anyway, um, Q, what do you what would you say is part of a typical day? Yeah. Um, so this morning I woke up and I did a little bit of yoga. Sometimes I like to do that to de-stress. It's been a little bit of a stressful week, so I decided to let some of that go. Uh, I had breakfast and went to my first class. Um, and then I had a meeting. So you, I have you usually have meetings for like work or like group projects and stuff throughout the day. So I had one of those and now we're here. Um, I have another class later today and I've been trying to get outside every single day and I have not been outside yet today. So after class, I'm going to take a walk um, so I can get some fresh air. And then I'll probably spend the rest of the evening uh, doing homework. Uh, because I have a bit of that. Luckily, it's Thursday, and I usually don't have deadlines over the weekend. Like, this this semester, anyways, I don't have any, like, weekend deadlines, so um, I don't really have a lot to do, but I just want to, you know, make sure I'm on track. So I'll probably do a little bit of homework and maybe, like, call uh, home since I haven't, I don't think I've called home this week, and I try to do it uh, once or twice a week, so I'll probably call home later. And, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> Um, how about you, Amar? Yeah, I guess like my typical day. Um, well, right now, like this semester, it's just been really boring because I've just been at home. But um, I guess like I'll speak about like what my typical day looked like when I was living on campus as a full time as a full time student. So um, typically, I would wake up an an hour before my first class in the morning, which would usually be at like 10.30 or sometimes like 10 o'clock. Um, I just like uh, get ready, like have breakfast and go to class. Um, then in 
um usually like my schedule is like I'd have one class in the morning then like a two-hour break then like another two classes in the afternoon all the time so like in that break like I'd either just like go out with like one of my friends to like get lunch either on campus or in the city of Pittsburgh like somewhere or or something like just somewhere nearby um then I'd go to like my afternoon classes after that then um I would just like find a place to just do work and and really just grind for like a few hours then yeah um after that like it would ideally be like dinner time or something and then that's where like yeah I would just take a break I'd eat dinner and then usually after dinner is like that's like when I would like to like go and exercise or something so like usually like I tried to like switch it up a bit when I was a student like I'd either go running or I would go to the gym or something but yeah I, I do think it's really important to have like some kind of a physical activity when you're a college student um, that definitely helps with both your mental and physical health and keeping focus. And yeah, so I, I always try to incorporate that into my daily schedule. But after I would be done with that, then I'd go back to like finding place to work on campus and just um, maybe finishing up some other like homework and assignments that I had to do. And then by then it would probably be like pretty late in the night, like 11 or like midnight sometimes like 1 a.m as well but and then after that like I would if I if I was if I wasn't feeling tired then like I'd either just like go to like my fraternity house and play video games for a little bit and then I would finally just go home since I, I live pretty close by so yeah that's like what my typical day looked like nice sounds like a good day um Richard how about you so uh a typical day doesn't really adhere to a schedule. Uh, I, I think uh, for me, saying that my like daily life is like a schedule is a very, very. Uh, um, it, it wouldn't fit. It wouldn't fit. A schedule implies some sort of sense of regularity. Um, for the most part, it's pretty much dependent on how my classes go. So I've had like semesters where like my classes all are like start at midday and those are the best semesters for me academically because I stay up really late. I'm one of those like I'm nocturnal as well. But um, uh, tip, so this semester, uh, my typical school day at CMU kind of is uh, I wake up like about 30 to 20 minutes before class. I eat some cereal. I sit through lecture, which is like all online. Um, usually I have like classes and then like breaks and then like classes um, in between uh, classes. Uh, if there's like a short assignment or something, I usually try to like finish those out. Otherwise, I won't really do anything because uh, like in 40 minutes, I'm not gonna be able to like sit down and actually get some meaningful work done. Most of, like the most like the busy work that I have for like some of my easier classes is just kind of like I sit there for like an hour or two and I get it done. And then all my homework for like my theory classes of like uh, my, I'm taking two, I'm taking a probability class and a theoretical computer science class for those that have to sit down for at least two or three hours to even like, just like think about looking at a problem. But um, uh, those will usually get done like by the end of the day um, I have classes until pretty late. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have tutoring sessions. Uh, but like Wednesdays, I have some like a class like that starts at 7 p.m. until 8.30. So afterwards, I'll probably do some homework, uh, eat, call my parents. And then I like playing video games at night. I don't know. It helps me relax so I can just go to sleep. Uh, when I was on campus, my schedule was a lot busier in that since I had to like wake up and like physically go and grab like food at like locations like I have to wake up and go get breakfast or whatever or I have to go and get lunch um my day was a lot busier I would like stick around campus all I, I lived on campus for the most part but um like I would like wake up go get breakfast go to class and then like if I'm done with class I'll just stay around the area and either work on something and then go eat somewhere else and then work on something else and then wait for my next class and if I'd like several hours between classes, I'd go back to my room and either nap or do more work. A lot more work when I was on campus. It's <laughs> a lot less time, a lot less free time since I have to physically move everywhere. So it's like I had less time to devote to like activities in general. So more of it was just homework. Yeah, that makes sense. You gotta be a little more focused. Yeah. Um, cool, okay, thanks. Um, for our last question of the day, I wonder if you could all look a little bit into the future um, and share some ideas you have about what you'll be doing in say five or 10 years. Um, yeah, um, Richard, do you mind going first? 
Yeah, sure. Um, I have no idea. <laughs> cool. All right. Easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, I said earlier that my major was computer science and that my, uh, my minor was in game design. Uh, I really, really like the idea of game design. I like playing video games a lot. And from the couple of game design classes I've taken so far, it looks really interesting. Um, the in only issue is that, uh, compared to like other computer science jobs, it'll probably be like a, like I'll take a hit to the pay for probably something that's more enjoyable but the gaming industry is kind of notorious for like uh what's it called for crunch periods where it's like before deadlines like we'll kind of like just sit there and like pull i don't know extremely long hours and yeah. it's really relatable to me as like my own individual like schedule like working style like i do that a lot too like i am a per i'm a super procrastinator it's just a terrible habit but i don't know if i would necessarily want that as like part of my regular career um, as opposed to just getting grabbing like a safer computer science job. Um, I wouldn't want to work at a startup because I've had like brief experiences with startup in like earlier in like my earlier years. And uh, I can't necessarily work with people who might be as disorganized as me. I don't want that. So uh, I definitely need some like some overarching like structure it's in place, like some sort of like red, like some, you know, like things to do like every week and like people know like what's supposed to get done by when. And uh, Aaron really <laughs> knows when, when, like how to keep you on track, like this needs to get done by this time. So yeah. It's true, Aaron keeps us all on track, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but that's pretty much, I have no idea what I'm gonna do in five to 10 years. I graduate in two Fair years, enough. you know what, we'll see. Yeah. Well, thanks. Those are some those are some interesting ideas. Um, what about you, Amar? Do you have any ideas um, what you want to be when you grow up? I'm still trying to figure it out too. Anyway, but yeah. Yeah, I I honestly also have no idea. I feel okay. like if you asked me this question two years ago, my answer would would have been something completely different. And if you ask me again in a year, it's going to be different from now as well. So I I mean, I don't know. I I guess like as of now, like in five years, like I would want to see myself having some role related to both like architecture and technology, such as like working at a company that makes technological products for people to use who are mm -hmm. in that architecture, engineering and construction industry. So um, I would love to have a role designing like those kinds of products. So I mean, that's like my main interest and ideally in five years, I, I would want to see myself being involved in that. But again, that's, you know, subject to change. Um, I, I still have another two years in college as well because my program's five years. So yeah, I mean, it's also some nice breathing room to, you know, be able to, and like it offers some flexibility too, to be able to change my long-term plan. So yeah. Nice. All right, thanks. How about you, Q? Yeah, um, so I have a little bit of an idea. Nice. Um, <laughs> right now I'm working on applying to PhD programs. So I'm looking at, I don't know, I've gotten really into public policy and um, political science. And there are a lot of programs that uh, are pretty quantitative with that and look at, um, you know, the statistics and like use history to like kind of make uh, informed decisions and things like that. Um, so I am looking at some of those programs. Um, and then after I get my PhD, like, oh no, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. Um, maybe I've been thinking about uh, coming in to teach. I think uh, being a professor would be a really interesting a career path. I don't know. I'm really passionate about education and um, especially post-secondary education. So I think going into that would be really uh, important. Um, yeah, I feel very strongly about like current representation of professors. Um, I don't know. I have yet to have a Black woman as a professor, but I think it would be really cool for people coming up in our generation to have uh, more representation. Um, of people doing really cool stuff because I think my professors do really cool stuff. So hopefully um, that's a plan that I would want to go on or a path that I would want to go down. Um, I do change my mind really frequently. So maybe that will change, but that's kind of what I'm thinking about right now. So, yeah. Nice, that sounds awesome. All right, well, we're going to wrap it up there. We're out of time. Um, thanks everyone for joining us. And thanks especially Q and Richard and Amar for sharing some of your experience. Uh, I'm just going to uh, put up the schedule here as a reminder. 
Um, welcome to come back 5.30 tonight or any of these three times tomorrow for the last of our Q&A sessions. Um, thanks again. I think maybe Q.